that's interesting and unique to look at. Um, it doesn't follow a particular style, so inevitably it's going to be slightly unique. Um, I think it's that uniqueness that um, people are looking at. Especially as you come around the corner, it's the first thing you see. You do see people regularly taking photos or standing there. I do, I do ask them what their opinion is, if they've got any questions. And more often than not, it's um, why is it rough or and smooth in areas? What is that stone doing? We want the, the church to be at the centre of Clerkenwell rather than in a backwater. So this building helps to, to make this area of Clerkenwell uh, more of a go-to place. There's a plot of a sort of slither of land at the side that belongs to the council but is actually inaccessible. So I would arrange that I would look after it for um, as long as I'm here or as long as someone's here. The plan was always then to make use of that and get access for all the neighbours. I have never seen anything like this before. It's very bold. It's very modern. I think it it's brings lots of people to come and have a look at it. So I think it's really good for the community. It's also a good thing to bring uh, students and apprentices here to give them more experience. My personal opinion is it's the, the first building of real merit probably since the church was built and uh, I hope it's the first of many buildings in Clarkmore Close uh, that we can be proud of for generations. Actually more than 50% uh, of the Close is 1970s and 80s. Um, they are half brick thick skins sitting in front of a steel or concrete frame structure. Uh, neither do they use the correct proportions or correct um, brick arches and lintels. So those are uh, very commercially expedient ways of building. Let's, um, uh, let's design something that apparently appears to be f something from the past. It sort of dilutes um, the real heritage that we have, so the original Victorian and Georgian buildings. What you see really is the way uh, previous generations used to build, which is the structure, whether it's brick or stone as a church, um, is the superstructure of the, of the building. It's holding the building up. At the same time, it's manipulated in a certain way to create a, a, an architectural aesthetic. If we're looking at limestone being a sedimentary rock, it actually uh, uh, has, once you split it, open across a sedimentary layer, you'll find all the fossilized coral as well as fossilized ammonite shells. That is a, is, a, is a sort of innate beauty in the stone itself and you wonder why you'd want to get rid of that and then carve something else into it. The natural um, beauty of, of, of materials is, um, is allowed to speak for itself. What you see up here looks like a fairly lush landscaped area, but it's actually really there to act both as water attenuation and biodiverse um, roof. So with um, landscape garden and horticulturalists, we calculated that if we have four trees of a certain scale up here, their root ball system eventually, once it's slightly matured, will absorb around about 90% of the annual rainfall. So the trees on the whole are doing the water attenuation and the, the other variety of plants are taking on the bees. So let's just say if you took a stone structure that stone is actually um, only 10% of the carbon footprint if you were using steel or concrete frame. So there's a huge advantage, a huge sustainability advantage. There's all sorts of arguments for architects to carry on using it. Uh, it's faster to build, it's um, about 25% cheaper than doing concrete or steel frame as well.
So you could say there was potential style for, not necessarily just aesthetically, but a reason for, for repeating it. So if you can imagine if that was repeated several times, it's in no way unique or unusual anymore. You have to spend time researching not just the physical area, but also um, looking into the background, sort of historical background of the area. Historically, the first structures that were on this site were an Augustinian nunnery built not long after the Norman invasion. And it was um, in limestone, uh, keyed in limestone, which is quite unique at the, at the time. So the eventual decision to go for stone uh, rises from that sort of historical context. Uh, and then deciding how that stone appears, the final appearance of it, is it clean cut? Is it dressed, carved in another way? I love the way this, this building adds to the incredible nature of Clerkenwell. And uh, we've got these small streets with huge amount of history and uh, having new design as part of that history uh, is a great contribution. I really like the building because it's, it's a real good representation of the history of the area. People that know the history of the area I think understand it a little bit more. Hence uh, our sort of deeper, longer research into what used to be on the site and see whether we could build something contemporary that draws from the specifics of this area and over time is understood this wouldn't have existed elsewhere.